Uh, were you guys really well accepted in the handy capable community, especially because of pickup, you know, towards the end of this? Um, I, I've, I've heard uh, people have kind of contacted me and said that there's one woman I know who works with uh, children with disabilities, and they really saw a lot to connect with in Hiccup, in that he sustained an injury for, for uh, very heroic reasons, but it didn't affect him in a negative way going forward. You know, he kind of coped with it and moved on, and I think in a neat way it completes him because he, is, he and Toothless share a similar loss, and, and they, are, they are that much more uh, kind of codependent in a great way. And how is it working against an emotional animal? Because you, I mean, you you have fun, but essentially your buddy is is the the, the emotion of yeah. the uh, the dragon. How is it working against that? You know, oh, trying to match that. Yeah. Um, well, for me, I just I've grown up around animals, and and there's you know, uh, and to this day I live with cats. You talk to them all the time. You have no idea. Constantly, <laughs> constantly, and and with an animal, you're dealing with a bundle of raw emotion, and it can go from happy to scared to angry in a heartbeat, and so. Um, you either dig it and connect to them, and you and you go, you know, you own it or you don't. And uh, and so for me, as an animal lover, um, I, I to me like, and also my eldest cat, Mary Manu, looks a lot like Toothless, as I keep telling him. And so I just pretend I'm talking to her. Now, in this world of uh, cartoons, it's almost like the dragon is his own his own super hiccup, hiccup superpower, essentially. Yeah. So, how do you guys build upon that for the next one to help allow him to, you know, learn more about what he can do and who he could be? I think a big part of it is is you know, we started we started the, the the first film with them as enemies, you know, and it was about them taking a chance on each other, and in their friendship, it actually changed their world. Now they're best friends, so how do we test that relationship and how do we really kind of make them grow as characters? And So without giving away much of the movie, there is, there is an arc to that as well. Um, and how about, how is the world of getting kids recognized in your voice? I mean, do, do you get that, the, the, the hiccups throughout Starbucks, just ordering something like, something tinge, you know? Well, I don't go to Starbucks, oh. and I don't think a lot of kids do either. If they do, their parents should take issue with that, oh, I suspect. Oh, it's out there. I've seen them. Oh, yeah. no. Um, no, but I'll tell you what I do have a lot of. I have a lot of people I know um, asking me to record messages for their kids or asking to call their kids or something like that. And, uh, and but I'll tell you, are they all positive, or it's like yeah. you skip school today, or or no, you need to do better like, in school. Hey, buddy, uh, here you like our movie? Come hang out with me on Burke or whatever. <laughs> the worst is when someone brings me to their kids in person, and they say, "You know who that is? Hiccup." And they look at me like, "No, it isn't. This is just some guy." Like, no, that's not him at all. Which is ultimately a huge letdown. Mentally, you're like not answering that guy's calls no, for a while. Exactly. Never again. Never again. Not till his kids know exactly who my who I am. Yeah. Uh, now, gentlemen, uh, both of you, right? Of course, you're uh, working on number. Three already, I'm hoping, and uh, you are uh, continuing writing as well. Yes. well. What's what's coming out, I guess? Well, I'm in the process of working on the sequel to uh, my hockey movie Goon, so we're trying to do Goon Two hopefully next year, and then. Which, uh, if you haven't seen, it, it's amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Great. Dean. Thank you, Dean. And then, um, and then we're uh, um, a comic book that my writing partner and I adapted called Random Acts of Violence. We're uh, working our uh, arses off to put that together so that I can hopefully direct that next year in Canada. So, uh, so yeah, just doing all sorts of goofy writing stuff. And then number three is already in the, the makings, I guess? Yeah, yeah, we're busy mixing the movie right now up at Skywalker Ranch. So number two is finishing, but in the, in the time off that I have, I've been grabbing a few moments to sort of plot out number three and get that working. All right, Jim. Well, thank you very much. We look forward to it, thank you. and we look forward to uh, everything that comes out. Thank you. I saw Johnny Clutch too. Is that one of the ones? Oh coming yeah. To? Well, I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. I got you. <laughs> That's the way it works out. <laughs> yeah, See you later. Very good. Man.